This is everything you need to know about ionic bonding on the chemistry regions in under five minutes. So an ionic bond is going to be a type of interaction between a non-metal and a metal. You know that all of your metals are going to be located to the left of this black bold line. Okay, so this is where all your metals are. And your non-metals are going to be located to the right of this, okay? And remember that hydrogen is a non-metal. So technically, um, it, it's also like grouped with the elements on this side, even though it's written over here. Okay, so metals and non-metals are going to form ionic bonds between them. The goal of any type of bond is to have a full or completed valence shell. So, for example, the valence shell is the outermost electron shell, okay? And the goal for any atom is to have eight electrons in this outermost shell, okay? So, for example, if I have fluorine, right, fluorine has seven valence electrons, right? So it has this inner shell with two electrons, which we don't really care about, but its valence shell has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven electrons, okay? So it's missing this final eighth electron to complete its shell. So generally, non-metals are going to want to gain electrons because they have a higher number of valence electrons. Metals, on the other hand, tend to lose electrons because they have a lower amount of electrons in their valence shell. So fluorine needs one extra valence electron to complete its shell. Now let's look at sodium, which is a, which is a pretty common metal, right? Sodium has an electron configuration of 2-8-1. So here we're going to have two electrons, here we're going to have eight electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And finally, in its outermost shell, which I'll put in a different color, it only has one electron, right? So if this sodium wanted to complete its valence shell, would it be easier to give up this one electron and just be left with a complete valence shell? Or would it be easier to gain seven more electrons? I think the obvious answer is that it'd be a lot harder to gain seven more electrons when you have a low electron negativity. Remember that metals have low electron negativities, so they're pretty bad at attracting electrons. So because they're pretty bad at attracting electrons and they already have a pretty low valence count, that means that it's a lot easier for them to just give up this valence electron and then just move back to their previous shell, which is going to actually have the eight valence electrons that they really want. So in an ionic interaction, the metal will be giving up its electrons to the non-metal. Okay, so by giving up its electrons, it technically completes its uh, valence shell by, you know, moving to the other shell that's already completed. And the non-metal is completing its shell by gaining that extra electron that it needs. Okay, so let's look at this in greater detail. So remember that ionic bonds are always between a non-metal and a metal. Let's look at NaF, for example, or sodium fluoride. Sodium fluoride, what's happening here is that this sodium has one valence electron, right? This is the Lewis dot diagram, it has one valence electron. This fluorine is gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven valence electrons. This fluorine has a high electron negativity. It's really good at pulling or attracting electrons from other species away from it. So in this orbital, it has seven, and it has an electron negativity of four. This sodium has an electron negativity of only 0.9. So the difference in electron negativities is going to be 3.1. Whenever your electron negativity is greater than 1.7, you're going to be left with an ionic bond. What that means is this fluorine is so much more electronegative and it's so much better at attracting electrons that it will literally rip this sodium's electron out of it. So this electron gets completely transferred into this fluorine. So instead of it being shared like in a covalent bond, this electron isn't even on this, in this sodium anymore. It's fully on this fluorine. And when this electron is now on this fluorine, what happens is that the fluorine becomes negative, right? Because now it has an extra electron which carries a negative charge. So we have fluorine that has a negative one charge, and the sodium just lost an electron, meaning that it has a positive one charge. And it's not the transfer of an electron that, cr that makes these two attracted to one another, it's actually their charges. Remember that plus and minus attract one another. So as a result, because the sodium is positively charged and this fluorine is negatively charged, the difference in charges are going to make them come together to form this ionic bond. So the ionic bond isn't the transfer of electrons, it's actually the resulting um, charges that form. And specifically, it's the attraction of this positively charged sodium with this negatively charged fluorine that makes this an ionic bond. And you'll see this, a, a very common trend or 
pattern happen between almost any metal and almost any non-metal. 